Oh, hi there. How can I help you? Sure. Do you need some recommendations? I'm happy to help. That's honestly my favorite part of my job. <laughs> so, what kind of genres are you interested in? Okay. Comedy. A little bit of history. Visual novels. Okay. Sounds good. I've got an idea. I've got a couple. I've got a bit of a variety here in my cart. Sure. Alright, um, let's start with comedy. I've got two selections here. Um, the first of which is I Am America and So Can You by Stephen Colbert. You've heard of him. Uh, so this book is a bit of a satire mixed with a biography. Um, but mostly satire. <laughs> so, it's not, I, I would describe it as very interactive. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, certainly not a joke book, but it's very funny. Um, so he breaks it down into different sections based on his life. So childhood, adolescence, and then maturity. And, uh, it's pretty interesting. So you get to learn a little bit about him, genuinely, but also, yeah, you've got this whole book, and one of my favorite things about this book is the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, what's the word? It's on the tip of my tongue. The margins. <laughs> the margins, he's got little annotations in the margins that are just so funny. Um, and there's all these great, uh, just images and illustrations. There's even games and charts and quizzes and, like I said, very interactive. It's very funny. So, let's see. I'll go ahead and read you the very first page. Congratulations! Just by opening the cover of this book, you became 25% more patriotic. From Stephen Colbert, the host of television's highest-rating punditry show, The Colbert Report, comes the book to fill the other 23 and a half hours of your day. I Am America, and So Can You, contains all of the opinions that Stephen doesn't have time to shoehorn in his nightly broadcast, dictated directly into a micro-cassette recorder over a three-day weekend. This book contains Stephen's most deeply held knee-jerk beliefs. Always controversial and outspoken, Stephen addresses why Hollywood is destroying America by inches, why evolution is a fraud, and why the elderly should be harnessed to millstones. You may not agree with everything Stephen says, but at the very least, you'll understand that your differing opinion is wrong. I am America, and so can you showcase Stephen Colbert at his most eloquent and impassioned. He is an unrelenting fighter for the soul of America, and in this book he fights the good fight for the traditional values that have served his country for so well long well for so long. Full disclosure, part of this book is plagiarized from Bill O'Reilly. Can you find it? So, you know, it's quite a bit of satire. Sure. Um, another one that I like to suggest that not a lot of people have heard about is, this is a book by Dimitri Martin. Yeah, it's a little more dry. Um, it's got um, quite a few short stories. And um, there's a whole section dedicated to charts and graphs that are funny, <laughs> believe it or not, and illustrations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, there's a whole different, yeah, it's got a lot of variety to it. So like I said, there's short stories, there's even these. This is a section dedicated to funny fortune cookies. Things that would be funny if they were on a fortune cookie. Like... Does advertising and fortune cookies work? It just did. Call 555-1326 for more information. <laughs> and then... We've got... A section of illustrations. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of Dimitri. I'll read you the inside cover. Dimitri Martin's first book. This is a book by Dimitri Martin is the renowned comedian's hilarious foray into prose comedy. 
In these pages, Martin expands on the sensibility he's developed on stage as an award-winning stand-up comedian and on television as a writer and performer on Late Night with Conan O'Brien, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and his own Comedy Central series, Important Things with Dimitri Martin. Featuring narrative essays, short stories, and conceptual pieces, such as Protagonist Hospital, where doctors treat only the shoulder wounds of Hollywood action heroes, as well as Martin's signature drawings, absurdities, and one-liners, this is a book delivers sharp jokes, colorful characters, and interesting surprises. Martin takes readers to places as far off as ancient Greece and the distant future. He recounts a lonely man's visit to a strip club in the form of a 500-word palindrome, and he examines the human condition and the competing worldviews of the divergent groups. Martin's material is varied, but his unique voice and brilliant mind will keep readers in stitches from beginning to end. Yeah, it's kind of a meta comedy, as you can tell from the title. Mm -hmm. That one's a really great one. All right. Um, okay, so visual novels. Um, again, one of my favorite genres. So we'll start off with this book called My Secret. Um, it's part of the Post Secret Project, which is something I just adore. Um, I found it online initially, and then realized it was published. I love it. Um, so it's all these letters and mostly postcards that people have sh sent in that are all decorated, um, and they all have a secret on them. Some of them happy, some of them sad, but almost all of them relatable in a quite strange way, and it's almost cathartic. Because, you know, some of them are just so intense and so, I don't know, some of them you read them and you're like, is this me? Like, it's pretty in intense sometimes and it's just so interesting because you kind of feel like you get to know all these people because these secrets are some of the most intimate parts of their lives that no one else in the world knows, but now you know. So, it's pretty interesting. And also the illustrations are pretty incredible too. So, I'll go ahead and read this little intro for you. In the past two years, I have received more than 50,000 secrets mailed to me on artfully decorated postcards. Most secrets are sent anonymously, but the secrets that arrive from young people usually stand out. Their passions run deeper, their loneliness feels more desolate, their joy is expansive, their postcards reveal a hidden landscape and sound as though they come from brave explorers, finding their way through a wilderness. When I travel to college campuses and speak about the post-secret project with students, I have been inspired by the stories they have told me, stories that begin with a secret and end with hope. A young man in Seattle described how he gave his mother a copy, and how the secrets inside allowed them to discuss experiences and concerns they had never talked about before. So. It's pretty interesting. There's a little bit more to that. It's pretty incredible. Okay. Yeah, this one really hits me home. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's beautiful. Um, now a more traditional like visual novel, not necessarily just like a picture book, I guess. Um, this one I totally recommend to everyone. It's gorgeous. It's a masterpiece. Jim Henson's Tale of Sand. Mm -hmm. um, this is a lost screenplay by Jim Henson and Jerry Jewell, realized by Ramon K. Perez. So it was illustrated and kind of pulled together by Ramon. Or Raymond. Ramon. So this one's more of a traditional graphic novel, like with the comic book style breakdown and it really is just a masterpiece I mean the way that he commands color and the way he uses um, these blocks the squares to his advantage are incredible I mean the story itself is amazing the writing is great but the visual storytelling is truly impressive as well and there's a great twist at the end by the way <laughs> But it really just is an immersive journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here in the beginning it talks a little bit about Jim. I'll go ahead and read it to you. 
Jim Henson first expressed his creative sensibility with a pencil and paper, watercolor and scratchboard. Along with the assignments for his high school art class, he drew cartoons and designed graphics for school publications, theater department posters and programs. In 1954, at the age of 17, Jim's infatuation with television led to an audition for a children's show requiring puppets. So he moved into the world of three dimensions, using fabric scraps, plastic, and wood. This launched a lifelong career using puppets on the screen to tell stories, entertain, teach, and communicate ideas. Jim's work in the 1950s focused on developing and performing characters for his local television show, Sam and Friends, and for television commercials. At the same time, his active imagination and creativity led to exploration of other forms of artistic expression, particularly on film. And then it kind of talks about his life more and more. It's really incredible. I'll go and read you the back blurb as well. Between 1967 and 1974, Jim Henson and his longtime writing partner Jerry Jewell developed three drafts of a screenplay for a feature-length film called Tale of Sand. It was during the development of the final draft of the screenplay that Jim Henson became involved in the production of Sesame Street and The Muppet Show, and he left the experimental filmmaking of his youth behind to concentrate on the creations that would in time make him a household name. Tale of Sand has remained in the vaults of the Jim Henson Company ever since. It is only feature-length screenplay written by Jim Henson that he was never able to produce during his lifetime. Breathtakingly illustrated by Ramon K. Perez, Tale of Sand has hailed as a groundbreaking achievement upon release, winning three 2002 Eisner Awards, including Best Graphic Album, Best Penciler, Inker, and Best Publication Design, as well as two Harvey Awards, and the Joe Schuster Award, and is named the best book of 2012 by iFanboy and Comic Alliance. A must-have for Henson fans, it helps complete a portrait of the American icon. Mind-bending surrealist perfection. A remarkable example of the type of visual storytelling that only graphic novels can achieve. That's true. It's so immersive in such a unique way. And the storyline is very surreal and dreamlike and... It's just a really fun, interesting, edge-of-your-seat kind of story. Love this one. I always recommend people to read this, um, and they're always kind of surprised that it's Jim Henson. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's incredible. He was a genius. <laughs> I think that the whole book is just a masterpiece. Okay. Sure. Um, if you're into historical things, I've got a great book for you. Now this one's clearly been well loved, as you can see. <laughs> this one's been with us for a while. It's almost time to get a new copy. It's called *The American Literature and Tra The American Tradition in Literature*. Sounds boring, looks boring, but I promise it's fun. <laughs> um, this book starts off. Um, it starts off actually with Native American writings goes to Christopher Columbus, and then to John Smith, as the earliest American writings, and then, I mean, it goes all the way up, I think, into the 2000s. Um, let's see. Let's see, who do we have here at the end? Ralph Ellison, Sylvia Plath, Robert Lowell, Let's see. Elizabeth Bishop, Catherine Porter, Ernest Hemingway. So, it, I mean, it's got so many classic stories in it. And as you can tell, it's very thick. <laughs> um, you know, so we've got, um, what's it called? The Cask of Amontillado. Amontillado. Um, we've got... Um, some Poe, poetry from Poe, um, let's see, and then we've also got, um, there's also historical documents in here, so there's, you know, there's fiction, there's poetry, there's short stories, there's some longer short stories, but still short stories, um, and then we've got, you know, Declaration of Independence, um, Mayflower Compact, stuff like that, um, all kind of tied into one, and each section, each story is divided by 
a little blurb about his, the history of the author and the time. So it's great for, you know, learning some history about America, but also mm -hmm, there's lots of variety in terms of authors and genres within this one book. So, I mean, this is really just an all-inclusive to American literature. I think yeah. um, in the back, it's even got, um, well, it's got an index, but it's also got this chart of historical literature timelines. So you can go through and say, oh, I want to read something from 1850s, and like, here's the whole section about 1850s and the different stories that they have for that. So that one's really great for just historical stuff. Okay. Okay. Gifts? Sure. Um, gifts are something that's really hard to do, but I think a book is such a great gift. Mm-hmm. So you've got a niece and nephew. Okay. I've got some that I would recommend. Um, this one I would recommend for your niece, although I think it'd probably be fine for both. Um, it's called The Map of Me by Tammy Lewis Brown. Um, it's kind of a growing up story and also an adventure story about a little girl. I'll read you the inside cover. The note mama left on the fridge says only I have to go. But go where? Twelve-year-old Margie is convinced she knows the answer. Mama hasn't run away. She's run to the rooster romp at the International Poultry Hall of Fame in search of a deluxe limited edition Henny Penny coin canister to add to her precious flock of chicken memorabilia. And it's up to Margie to bring it home to her and to, br to bring her home, <laughs> Henny Penny ca coin canister and all. So she commandeers her daddy's faithful Ford, kidnaps her nine-year-old sister Pete, and takes to the open road. On a long rainy night, as she navigates the back roads of Kentucky with smarty pants Peep, criticizing her every move from the passenger seat, Margie also travels along the highways and byways of her heart, mapping a course to help understand Mama and herself. So, it's kind of a classic growing up story for little girls. Really cute. And then we've also got this, which is a personal favorite. Great for cartoon lover, um, especially if they like Adventure Time. This is the Adventure Time Encyclopedia. And we've got some other books very similar to this for different shows as well, if you're interested in those. Um, and this one's really great because it doesn't really take itself too seriously as a book. It, it kind of takes itself as if the, the characters in the show actually made it themselves. So it starts off with like this illustrated map. And then it's got all these sections that are, you know, made by the different characters. So Ice King's got a section, Marceline's got a section, you know, all the characters have kind of thrown their own twist onto their sections. So there's a lot of different styles, a lot of illustrations, a lot of fun stuff going on. There's a lot of facts about the show, you can learn a lot about different characters. Um, and there's also some, like, short stories and fun little stuff going on in here. Mm -hmm. I love this one. It's got a really nice textured cover, too. It says, Everything you've ever wanted to know about Adventure Time. Written by the Lord of Evil himself, Hunson Abadir, to instruct and confound the demonic citizenry of the Nidosphere. The Adventure Time Encyclopedia is perhaps the most dangerous book in history, although seemingly a guidebook to the land of Ooh and its post-apocalyptic inhabitants. It is in fact an amusing nightmare of literary pitfalls, bombastic brain boggles, and ancient texts designed to drive the reader mad. Complete with secret lore and wizard spells, fun places you should visit and places you will probably die, advice on whom to marry and whom not to marry, and how to make friends and destroy your enemies. This volume includes handwritten Marginalia by Finn, Jake, and Marcy. So that's fun. So would you like to take any of these home with you today? Oh, you don't have a library card. Well, you know I'd be so happy to help you get one. Absolutely. Do you have an ID with you? Alright, um, go ahead and get that out. Again here. And what's your first name? Last name. Alright. Is that your ID? Perfect, okay. So. 
a very good picture of you. <laughs> My last ID turned out well, but we'll see. Alright. There's your ID back. Alright, what's your email address? street address. And your zip code. And please. And we're going to give you a temporary paper card, but they're going to mail one to you in about a week. Would you like to take home today? A tale of sand. Awesome choice. Love that one. Next time you come in, you're gonna have to tell me how you liked it. And any others? Stephen Colbert one. Great choice. You'll have a lot of fun with this one. Alright. And there you go, books. Perfect. All right. Well, let's see if that is all set up. And those will be due back in two weeks. But if you want to do an extension, you can either come in and we can do that for you. Um, make sure to bring your temporary card, or you can do it online. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me write down for you the number for your account. So. When you go onto our website, there's your number. Um, there's going to be a thing for login. You say new user, type in your number, and it'll see it as your account. It'll ask you to create a password, and then you'll have an account. All right, sound good? All right, well, I look forward to seeing you again. Bye now. Enjoy your books. <laughs>